so what are the basic steps which uh, you know you can use to solve any question involving any number of dimensions in kinematics this is the most important part of this webinar and this is what we are going to talk about for the next 10 minutes right i'll give you four or five steps right which basically solve this problem right so uh, see this is where uh, you know this is uh, there's a reason why i came up with this and uh, as a uh, you know generally i have this habit in which i find it very confusing if in a single chapter there are five conditions and each of those conditions have different formulas right in that case i have to remember each of those different formulas and i also have to remember in which case can i apply them that's very confusing for me right i won't be able to score marks in that case so my solution to that is find out the underlying concept over there find out what works in every case practice that a lot in every case and then you know use that so over there i am i am very sure that i will get the right answer i may not get the right answer in 30 seconds but i'll definitely get the right answer in 1 minute which is fine right which is fine because if the choice is between accuracy and speed i will go for accuracy first accuracy comes first accuracy means plus 4 negative i want to avoid negative marking right so accuracy comes first and then comes speed so that is why this is how i came up with these steps if which if you apply to any question of any concept of kinematics be it relative motion in one dimension relative motion in two dimension projectile motion you know the normal projectile motion or the projectile motion like this or the projectile motion in this fashion any kind of motion if you apply these four steps four or five steps it will work right so let's find out what these steps are very quickly first step define the axis as per your convenience whatever you are comfortable with right over here there is a side note in some cases the axis is defined by the question itself the question tells you that you know this is the horizontal and maybe your quantity quantities are at some angle with the horizontal so over there the axis is defined for you but still you can still define your own axis keep in mind that later on you will have to revert back to the axis of the question that is one thing that you have to keep in mind all right so first step over here define the axis let me explain that more more clearly here let's say i have two three quantities you know random quantities like this right now one axis could be this could be you know one axis right x and y or or what can you do other than this or maybe i can use one of these quantities itself as my axis so let's say this becomes my x and the perpendicular to this becomes my y what is the advantage what is the advantage here in this blue case right in this blue uh, case none of my quantities the one which is described by blue none of my quantities are along the axis and therefore i will have to resolve all the quantities in this red one at least one of them is something that i don't have to resolve right i will only need to resolve the rest of them according to right whatever angle that i can find out so i will only need to resolve three of them not four of them so that is what you take care of point number 1 define the axis in such a way that you minimize your effort if that is different from what is given in the question make sure that you revert back to it later on right point number 2 is resolve all the quantities that you have all quantities that you have according to this axis all the quantities if you have velocities if you have accelerations if you have displacements any vector quantities that you have in the picture make sure that they are resolved according to these axes that is step number 2 all right everyone i'll tell you how to resolve in a very short while right point number 3 is very important and this is where we make mistakes so if you have understood point 1 and 2 right you will have no difficulty at all point number 3 is where you will make silly mistakes right point number 3 is where you will make silly mistakes one when we resolve quantities it's very very important to uh, you know give them positive or negative for example right in this x uh, you know in this red part this is the positive x side and this is the positive y side which means the opposite of that would be negative x or negative y it's very important to take care of this plus and minus for example right let's take this uh, this vector p right so it makes an angle of uh, theta here right and over here this is the base part so this is p cos theta i'll tell you how it is p cos theta in a short while but 
for now let just agree with me that this is p cos theta now this p cos theta is towards positive x axis so i'll make sure that i write a plus over here right this is p sin theta again towards the positive axis i'll make sure that i write a plus over here right now over here i also have another quantity and uh, right this one let's say this is q and this make makes an angle of alpha right in that case if i resolve this this is q cos alpha and which direction is it at it's in the opposite direction of x i will write as minus why am i doing this the reason why i am doing this is because along a particular axis i would know which quantities to add and which quantities to subtract right so if p and q both are velocities then the overall velocity that i will have in this direction is p cos theta minus q cos alpha this is what i will have okay everyone right so that is the reason everything gets resolved in these two dimensions right we you just have to take care of plus and minus here all right so this is minus q cos alpha and this would be uh minus q sin alpha right everyone okay and lastly the last step is all those equations that we saw the three equations right they only work in a single direction they will only work in a single direction right and since now everything is in you know particular directions apply those equations along each of those you only have two direction now apply those equations along these two directions this is the exact step that is followed to derive all those quantities that we derive for projectile motion be it for inclined projectile motion right or normal standard projectile motion these are the ex exact steps that you follow so why why don't we follow this step while solving questions itself right while solving questions and see how it works out you will realize that it is easier to do this than to remember the formula every time you will realize I i'll do this right now you'll realize that it is easier to do this than to actually remember the formula every time at what angle of projection of a projectile at what angle will you uh, will the maximum range be twice the maximum height